Hello, everybody. Welcome back to You've Been Josh with Josh. I am your host, Heshua. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going? I don't even know what episode that is. I normally do that joke thing in the beginning every single time, but uh, it's been such a busy week that I have no idea what episode we're on. What is it? It's 28. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Two more, and then we're at uh, 30. We'll be 30 years old. Holy shit. Isn't that crazy? My God. My God. Um, so some announcements, some announcements, um, things have been, things have been changing, things have been popping, things have been locking, things have been poking dot, po polka dotting, was that the Miley Cyrus song from that, that movie? I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> hope everybody's been well. It's been a busy week. Uh, we had the community survey out for a week. A lot of people have answered. Thank you so much for doing so. Um, over this weekend, I had a very long, busy weekend, um, Filling out a bunch of different things. I implemented a bunch of new channel point redemptions, sound alerts, uh, a new scene. Um, filled out the Discord a little bit. There's some more stuff that I had to do. Filled a bunch of emotes. Uh, did, got a bunch of things in the works. Trying to get everything situated. And things are coming together. Things are coming together. But I've been working my, my little tushy off. I've been working my little tushy off. It's been nutty. Um... It's been a busy week, but things have been fantastic. Um, Joy and I made a turkey this weekend in our instant pot. That was a joy. That was a no pun, no pun intended. That was a um, that was fun to do. Um, huge shout out to my wife for for uh, expanding her her knowledge when it comes to cooking. Her and I have been have been trying different things together. We had the duck for Thanksgiving, and now the turkey for uh, for Easter. Uh, happy Easter to all who who celebrate. Um, we didn't do anything special. We, we also don't celebrate it personally, but, um, we just had a nice relaxing weekend. She had an extra long weekend because of her work and we just, we just hung out. It was really nice. Um, but also I was working a lot during the weekend. So it was mostly her doing her bullet journal and me, um, messing around with stuff on online and, and doing that, which was fun. Um, but update on the platinums. We're at 194, 194, six more six more platinums and I'm at my 200 goal. So we're definitely, definitely going to need, um, to bump that number. So I'm thinking 250 to keep it, you know, keep it general. And then we can go up from there if we need to, uh, cause it's only April and we're almost there. So, uh, we'll see how that goes, but we're in the top 4,000 in the country now, which is pretty fucking crazy. I'm playing a bunch of new games, but speaking of games, peeps, we've been playing a lot of indie games lately on stream, which is been super super cool um and i uh, people have been loving them i love them so much um especially the puzzle ones um but we're starting up with a new longer game i wanted to start working on a longer game that was one of the things in the survey uh, we've been doing a vote in the discord and it looks like it's going to be either red Dead redemption 2 or control if anybody's ever played those games i'm very excited i've seen people play them but i don't know the story i don't know what happens in them uh, nor have I ever played them, so I'm excited to try them out. Um, that'll be our first one. We'll probably play that one or two times a week until we beat it, um, and then we'll have the indie games thrown in the mix. Um, and we're also planning on doing some new, uh, some new crazy stuff on stream, like some music streams, possibly some karaoke, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Only time will tell. Yes. Uh, other, other than that nothing really new just been working my little tushy off um very excited for 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 life and everything um thank you for everyone who who listened to the podcast last week the uh the 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 bit heavy one and uh um gave me some nice feedback and uh the nice messages you guys sent me it was it was uh it was a good conversation to have i think it needed to be had um but also um it was good for me just to get it off my chest um because obviously that's uh, personal to me but also um, I think uh, mental health is something that should be uh, talked about more in a more relaxed setting, not uh, in your face. So I thought that was a, a good way to do that. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone who listened. Um, guys, I don't you can probably see from the title uh, if you're listening to this, obviously. Uh, we have a guest today. Um, he's a, the, the, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, the man, the man, the, um, the sloth, the legend. Doug Nutt. 
How's it going? <laughs> Yo, what's up? The sloth, the legend. The, the, That's me. The legend sloth. <laughs> Legendary sloth. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, man? I'm doing great. Doing swell. Is, is, as good as we can be. <laughs> that's right yeah yeah it doesn't even have to mean that we're doing bad it's just that's how life works we're as good surviving. as we can be we're surviving and yeah, we're we, as long time. as we're happy each day that's that's all that matters um sure what is it uh so doug how how long how long have you been streaming for now like what 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 uh what got you into streaming what what made you uh want to want to do it like give me the rundown do you want how how in depth do you want because we get go into my whole life story here. I'll give you the short first, and then we can get okay. into it later. But but I've been streaming for about like uh, a little over a year now. I, I started in December of 2020. So um, and I was kind of looking for something to do on the side, uh, and kind of stumbled into streaming and just started doing it because you know I was I was spending all my time playing video games. So I was like, I might as well do something with this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I just ended up really really liking it, and then just diving in you know yeah Diving. i feel like that's how a lot of people start they're like oh i just i just want to stream games and stuff and then you get into it and you're like oh there's a lot involved in this and you yeah. kind of people die, you have to kind of dive right into it but it, i i think a lot of people don't realize like how much you have to grow within yourself <laughs> and find out what you want to do because like obviously at the end of the day a lot of us just want to play video games, but then like yeah. some of us aren't good at them. Some of them like there's certain games you want to play and then finding your own takes some time. It's like I'm streaming and then there's streaming. And, yeah. You know, like, it's <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like you can you can just go live and play a game and stream and you're totally streaming and that's definitely it. But I think like the especially in this day and age, because there's so much content out there that if you want to stand out as a content creator, you have to really hone in on what your content is and yeah. figure out your brand and all that sort of stuff. And, exactly. Uh, and 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 also you don't know, realize that oh when you're streaming you're also if you're trying to be successful at it there's also YouTube and TikTok and all that shit that just takes up uh like so, so much. much time yeah, yeah like you really it really becomes all consuming and it's, yeah. yeah but I love it um what what made you want to do uh, the sloth like where did the sloth come from uh where did the sloth I, okay so okay so i actually so i just really uh i just like sloths i think they're funny like i i've never really had like a favorite animal you know i've yeah. never really been really like that's my favorite animal and that's what i identify with but like i just always really liked sloths and enjoyed them and yeah. um my friend's girlfriend actually got me a birthday card one time that said uh like i'm not slow i'm just sloth speed and it had like this like sloth on it with a with a dunce cap on yeah and so when i started streaming i didn't really want to use a picture of myself on twitch for like the like you know your little icon i just thought that was weird and i it felt weird taking a picture of myself so i used yeah. the, that picture and then when i hit affiliate i was like oh i should really like <laughs> not use this picture that i don't own and yeah. kind of like hone in on a brand kind of at like somewhat so i had this lot thing going so i basically just drew my version of it i just drew the sloth and i gave it a baseball cap instead of a dunce cap and it already had the d on it because of doug so or well the dunce cap had a d on it but i left the d on it for doug so that's kind of how that came to be so i love that and then yeah yeah and just so where with it. where's where did the name come from then the doug nut comes from it was my gamer tag for a long time uh mm. it comes from there was an old uh video game called uh i think it was a nintendo game it was called I think it's like Japanese fighting baseball or something like that. It's it's I can't remember the name, but it essentially has a just uh, they had to come up with an Amer American team and American names for the team, and the names are just, um, uh, so just totally ridiculous. Yeah, like there's like Sleeve McDyshell and uh, just all these other ones, and one of them was Bob's and Doug Nut. I just always liked Bob's and Doug Nut, and then I thought that Doug Nut just sounded like a good gamer tag name, so I. Uh, I was using that for my gamer tag for a while. And then when I started streaming on Twitch, I was like, uh, I guess it's either use my name or use Doug Nut. And I felt like Doug Nut had more character. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I love that. So, yeah, which has been great. But it's also funny because, like, now uh, everyone calls me Doug, uh, which is like not my name, but you know i get called it's kind of like you have like a second name now right because people call each other by their twitch names but i feel like sometimes twitch names are more like uh 
I don't know, like, you know, like someone might call you like, for example, like my buddy gets called Raven or like that sort of thing. Right. Whereas like yeah. I get called Doug, which is just another name. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's another, like, I, it'd be like, if, yeah, yeah. Surprisingly, a lot of people call me Bean. <laughs> That's, I called you Bean. Well, I started yeah. calling you Bean because, because in at least the way that I pronounce it, at least in Canada, I don't know if it's a Canadian thing or not, but I, we say Bean. Like I've, I've been there, been there, done that. Yeah. Instead of been there. Because bin mm-hmm. is, I mean, you could say like bin, but like in my mind, a bin is like a container that you use to hold things. So yeah. I remember I would always raid into you and get get shit for it because it, I'd be like, we're going to go see <laughs> Bean Josh. And everyone's like, it's Bin Josh. I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is a and little that, confusing. It is a little confusing, especially because people say human being and stuff. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought you were gonna say though. It's funny because my name's actually not Josh. It's a uh, you know, it's <laughs> like you. Just, <laughs> Do you this imagine whole time, this, this whole, whole time? time. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's actually frederick Steven. yeah <laughs> <laughs> shit um oh that's funny we can swear on this right oh is yeah 100 percent. this okay. is mature right. this is mature all right cool cool fuck. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i just um, don't want to be like you know make your life difficult no no you're good um cool. going back to what um you were saying about the content and stuff um uh it's interesting mate you 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 talked about that because like there's a lot of streamers that I know who just do just chatting and they do better when they're just chatting than they do um, like playing a video game, you know, but yeah. they started off playing video games. But then there's some people who play games that I'm too afraid to touch because I feel like it's going to be boring, you know, Yeah. but are yeah. so entertaining that they can do that because yeah. they're there for that person rather than the thing. Because like I'm honestly the first person I think of is, do you know that sandwich, dude? I love that sandwich, dude. He oh my God. is my... He has been he, like my favorite for a while. I've been watching him for a, a long time. He is so good. He's so it, good. And he plays it, like fucking Death Stranding and Seafarer and shit. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. And like he's just doing it casually. But because of all the other stuff he brings to it, it doesn't yeah. make it boring. And that's what he's I'm trying to get to. Yeah. Guy. He's so talented. Yeah. So talented. And that's think, where I'm trying to get to is like where I can play games that I want to play without having to worry about it being boring because like I'm doing my own thing. Not that I feel like I'm, well, of course I'm going to feel like I'm boring. You always criticize yourself. I always feel like I'm boring, but like, same. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just one of those things, but I think it's, it's so interesting, you know, I still, yeah. I mean, I'm very firmly in the, so I still feel like I need to figure out my content. Like I've been streaming for a while now. I still feel like from time to time that I haven't solidified what it is that I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think like everyone's variety nowadays and, but what does variety mean to you? I think is the question that you have to kind of ask yourself when you're streaming and also what my, what your content is and what sets your your content aside from everyone else. And I think that that's the hardest part of streaming. And I think especially nowadays, there's so much gameplay content out there that I think unless you're playing a game that people really want to see someone else play through, um, because they've already experienced it themselves you're not actually getting people going out there watching who want to watch gameplay you know what i mean like it's it's i think a lot of people on twitch now are looking for that interaction which is and so i think just chatting is where most people actually do well because um a lot of time people just want to interact you know yeah no like i think i think some of the most fun streams that i do are surprisingly streams where we're like chatting or reacting or doing something that's actually not playing a game. But uh yeah. but I really like playing games. So it's like it's um, a it's a to- it, it's a tear, you know? Cuz you yeah. want to play video games and like that's my thing is I I'm trying to get more into the the trophy hunting thing cuz that's like what I started streaming for. Like that's yeah. what I wanted to do and I'm trying to get in there but I'm trying to make it as fun as possible so that way I can still do it but also like I'm trying to appease both sides because both make me happy, but I want to make sure that both are entertaining for everybody. Yeah, I think I think the thing with gaming is like you just have to have a good idea of what it is you're doing, right? Yeah. Like so, if you're, I, I honestly think like, and this is probably a bad take, but like, if you're gaming, like you should be either like gaming and chatting or like just focusing on the game but like if you're just focused on the game like what is your what is it about your stream that brings people in right like what is it about your gameplay in particular that's gonna make it interesting yeah um and like i know for me personally like unless i have some sort of good 
uh like challenge run or something going on or doing something interesting with the game it's just i'm just another guy playing a game like i think i'm fairly entertaining but like i really lean into that chatting side of playing a game when i'm playing a game because it one it's more fun for me to engage with other people but then like two uh you know like i just don't think i'm doing with the gameplay enough original stuff to have the gameplay as a crush like because other people have done it before right and if you look at like your stream like it's like okay well why are people coming to my stream why wouldn't they if i'm just doing gameplay why wouldn't they go to like you know youtube and watch like somebody else exactly right like or play it themselves you know or play it themselves yeah exactly like the only the only game that i've played on stream that i was like i know like i can understand why people are coming to watch this on twitch is uh the outer wilds because outer wilds is one of those games where you play it and then you can't play through it again because you know how to beat it and you know the shtick and it's like yeah it's all about the kind of the first playthrough so i understand like going through and like watching somebody who's like never played uh like that before because you can't experience it again so you're kind of like living through someone else but like 100 percent. but like you know i would never go on twitch and like watch someone play halo and like it's, it's or, or battle things, royales like, because it's the no, same thing. Battle Royales, like, I get a, a bit more because it's it's short and it kind of has. A, it's I mean, short, I don't know. but it's always There's, the same. That's why I've stopped. Play, yeah. Like, I'll play them with friends, but I don't do it on stream anymore because, like, it's the same thing. Like, yeah, something else will happen or you'll drop someone different or you might have someone else shoot at you or but blah, blah, blah. But it's. I think I think for me, at least the way that I am as a viewer, stakes are so important um it doesn't matter and and this is for like any stream that i do i'm always yeah. thinking of what are the stakes or what's the goal right mm. so i really struggle with watching games like stardew or animal crossing or those cozy games because they're more just kind of like you you do the cozy thing and they're more background anyway right but yeah. like but um but when i'm there i'm there to like chat i'm not there to watch stardew yeah. valley or whatever right like if someone's 100%. playing stardew valley like I'm not paying any attention really to what's going on in Stardew. I'm just there for the conversation. And the moment it Mm -hmm. starts becoming about the game, I'm out. Because for me in Stardew, there's like no stakes. I would like if I'm just going to watch Stardew, I'd probably rather play it myself. You know what I mean? Whereas like, whereas like I can kind of, I'm not a COD fan at all, but like I could get behind watching a Battle Royale or like Fortnite or something. If someone's talking about stuff. Well, because there's a goal and because they're you it's easy to get invested in those stakes, right? It's like oh, is this gotcha, person gotcha, gonna gotcha, make gotcha. it to the end or not? Are they gonna win? And the stakes are high because in a battle royale, if you get eliminated, you're out, right? And that's yeah. the end of your thing. Whereas like the reason why like I say like Halo or something is because it, those deathmatch games where you just kind of keep spawning back in and, and charging like, you know, endlessly at the you know what I mean? Like you just keep yeah. keep throwing yourselves in there and there's no stakes because if you die nothing happens so i think you know with gaming for me especially it's important to like have stakes in the game that you're playing on stream just because you know or you know or you know there's so many different factors but for me i like to have stakes anyway or a challenge or something like you know i'm doing the whole elden ring with my butt right now which is painful (laughs) but i think it's different than just somebody yeah just playing elden ring right like yeah because everyone's playing it i like it I like that. I feel like you and I have the same mindset, but in different forms. So like you, Mm -hmm. you do, you like putting a goal for yourself and doing that. Whereas for me, my goals are the trophies. Yeah. And so that's that's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just one's already formatted for me. You, you take it on more creative approach of like, I'm going to make a goal for myself because you're not going after the achievements. You're just trying to beat the game, but you're doing it in a way that's different from just normally playing it. And I, I like that because like I, I understand what you're you're saying. Um, yeah, for me, I think thing. like it's 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 for me like I would honestly do an achievement, too, if there's an achievement that's good enough or like. But for me, like I don't my content's not consistently like I need 100 percent things. If, yeah. if anything, it's the opposite of that, where I just kind of struggle through games until I beat them or, or yeah. you know what I mean? I think I think for me, it's more about like my content is more about the struggle and then the success versus like the just like going through and 100 percenting everything yeah. and i also you know um and it's also uh i wonder how you deal with this because it's hard because I, I think that like not every game is super interesting to 100 percent, you know oh 100 so this is this is the hard part for me so like i like 100 percenting games not in the sense of i need to complete every side mission everything blah 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 just getting 100 percent of the trophies mm-hmm. so if a game's interesting enough for me then i will 100 percent everything even if it doesn't have a trophy related thing 
Mm -hmm. um, because I want to hear what the story is. I want to hear like, I want to see the secret ending. I want to, you know, like those things that they give it for you if you do all of that. Um, That's why I've been focusing more on indie games because with indie games, you can normally beat it in four hours. So that's a whole stream or like 10 hours, which is two streams. And um, to 100% the game, it's literally just completing the game you know mm-hmm. and yep. if i play a bigger game which is what i'm starting starting to do here this week is i'm going to start one game that it's like a longer one that i play like once or twice a week with mm-hmm. those games the extra 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 stuff the ones that are have like the grind because i i did see your survey answer thank you so much thank you so much oh, for yeah, taking yeah. that <laughs> hey, um, hey no problem I pre- yeah, yeah, honestly yeah. you were the one person who said no and i appreciate you that for that so much dude i like to, um, i like to keep it real i i i really like content creation and i take it seriously and yeah. so and i like talking about it and if i see something that i think like somebody could i mean there's i i'm not the be all end all i don't know what the hell i'm talking about half the time but i you know i have opinions and i think that it's yeah no and it's you, important you know, to talk about it and that's yeah and 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 what with what you had said like obviously um well, do you certain talk games about it because what was the because what was the question it so was, the question uh, was um are you enjoying the trophy hunting streams and to oh, give yeah. preference to, to anyone who's listening who hasn't been to my streams um trophy hunting is achievement systems in playstation so like steam and xbox they have uh achievements in games that are secret or like that are a goal and you go and you complete it and you get it checked off and it says you have, you have completed that um yeah. for playstation they have a bunch of different trophies that are all the achievements in the game. Once you get all of them, you get a platinum trophy. And the platinum trophy signifies that you've completed all of the achievements in the games that's allotted by the developers. So what I try to do is I try to collect as many trophies and platinums as possible. And my goal, like I had in the announcements today, um, is to get 200 by the end of this year. So I've been trying to implement them into um, my streams because that's what that's a hobby of mine. I love doing it. It's like collecting stuff for me. Like I like collecting them and I like saying that, oh yeah, I've a hundred percent gotten all the achievements in this game. It's a, it's like, it's like, it's like a, the show off. It's like a, it's like a, Hey, look, yeah, I did this, like, you know, you got the clout. You yeah. It's the, like, I did that. The, I did that. Yeah. And I'm proud of that. And it's there yeah. and it's forever. Um, And so the, my question was to everybody in the community, do you like it? Do you think there's something that you could do more of blah, 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 blah. Doug was the only person <laughs> who said no. And it wasn't no. that you don't like it. And I appreciate you I, I love explaining your content. it. It's, I love your it's stream. the yeah. fact that you were like some for some things, for some trophies, it becomes monotonous, you know? Yeah. And I find it hard as a content creator to watch because I know that like there are probably times where you're like, oh, I have to collect like every single feather mm. or like every and, and like, you know, like if it was like Assassin's Creed or something. And like I've like I've had streams like I was playing Elden Ring the other day and there are times where like they're like these like hidden turtles or whatever, these tortoises. Yeah. And you have to find them around the tower and kill them to get into the tower. Mm. And they're like pretty hidden sometimes they're harder to find. And I just know the struggle of like streaming and trying to make it interesting as you're just running around. Exactly. Trying to find something that you can't find. Like it just gets frustrating for you. And I think, you know, it's probably not nearly as frustrating for viewers as we think it is as we but, think it is yeah but and that, i just and can't that's imagine the, like having to do that like for like a lot because a lot of games their their achievements are like 100 percent, and it's like collecting something you or, know? Like or like play for 100 hours or something like this yeah something exactly stupid. and yeah. so that's and i'm glad that you talked and i didn't take it in a bad way because i know you so it wasn't like even if it was someone i didn't know i wouldn't take it that way because you also explained in the next question which was like what would you like change or something you had stated that um, it was for that reason. And it was yeah. cool that you said that because literally with this new change that I did, um, I'm only doing like the smaller games that don't require that kind of grind because uh-huh. I know how boring it can be. And also well, I want to be able to keep it interesting. So like the longer games, those ones that I have to grind for like Borderlands, I have to play the entire game over to get the plan for Borderlands. I'm doing on my yes. off time. And I play I that say, off stream. I think you can do that stuff off stream. Like, I yeah. think, like, I think uh, still achievement hunting is like a great goal to have on stream. I just think you got to make sure to know which ones to do on stream, which ones to do off stream. Exactly. Like, I think there's like, yeah. um, but I also think too, this is what I wanted to touch on. I think with feedback, it's really important that if you're going to give criticism, you give like constructive criticism or at least elaborate, you know? <laughs> yeah. So often, <laughs> and I know as a streamer too, so often we like put out these like things like, hey, what uh, like, do you I've think? Just stopped. 
yeah i've just stopped asking people for those like i've just stopped going and being like hey what do you guys think of this or do you have any suggestions because 90 percent of the time people are going to come back like nah it's good you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah if, if yeah it ain't broke don't fix it like and then like maybe one percent you'll get that one person who like gives you like good constructive and it's so nice dude it's so feedback. good that's yeah, why I, yeah, yeah. that's why i was like thank you because like even though like well, I know that's what you wanted from it. Like, I yeah. know you weren't looking for everyone to just go like, yep, 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 yep. Like, you want to, as a content creator, you're constantly grow. looking for, yeah. yeah, for feedback and ways that people can, like, help, help you be better. 100%. Um, and so, I made sure to tell it like it was. Uh, but, <laughs> but no, I, yeah. love your, I love your content. It's fun. It's, Yo, right it's back really at you, good. man. I always yeah. enjoy being in streams. Um, mm -hmm. What is it? Uh going off of that this is a perfect segue okay so people who who are who are the top names in streaming there's a lot of people who are just chatting but there's still a lot of people on twitch that get pulled in for ads and whatnot for twitch or like gamers and whatnot who mm -hmm. are like competitive gamers who like play fortnite play cod warzone all those different things okay. um those are the people who get pulled in for ads who represent us for the most part. Okay. Are there are a few like nin ninja and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, ninja okay. and other things like yeah, that. Yeah. People who normally don't talk or are on the entertainment side of Twitch. And this is going to go oh. into the topic of today, which is ads. Okay. Okay. But right, right. one thing that I keep seeing on Twitch are ads for Uber Eats or um, Taco Bell for other things like that that uh -huh. have gamers on it promoting yeah. that product and they are the worst actors i have yeah. ever seen in my life <laughs> and yeah. they're like names and i'm like bro if i can't even be entertained by your ad that's 30 <laughs> seconds how the hell do you want me to be like you know what i'm saying and but they're always just like you know, sitting at a desk with like nothing around them and they're like thanks for the uber eats uh, but <laughs> it's smart and it's it's smart because they're like so because i work in film and tv yeah. and stuff so i i do a lot of commercials and i know that there's a lot of just like really targeted commercials so all these commercials you're seeing on twitch yeah a lot of them are like made just for twitch um especially the ones with like ninja and stuff right like you're yeah. not really gonna see ninja on tv um even though ninja is like a big you know internet person i still feel like twitch is still like a very small people on twitch are still a very small portion of the population right 100 percent um and it's grown a lot bigger since covid but like you know like twitch celebrities like ludwig or amaranth can like walk down the street without getting recognized on a day-to-day -day basis you know yeah and i think like um those twitch ads like while they're maybe shitty actors and shitty ads it's doing two things and it's it's one like uber eats and taco bell are catering to their audience like they know that a lot of people the, the, the uber eats wants to be targeting the people who are, want to be staying at home right mm -hmm. like the amount of times after a stream i'll order uber eats just because i'm too lazy to go to the grocery store and stuff like that like yeah. that's the i'm their audience right they run that twitch audience where yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. twitch i don't want to yeah they're and smart that, as fuck <laughs> yeah and if you get a streamer who they might watch right or somebody they might know like it just kind of promoting that thing i'd be like oh it's that person you know it's like it's like any ad but it's like you so know, you're trying to you sell a lifestyle or whatever a product or but yeah the but other ironic part about that is i 100 mm -hmm. agree with you the the ads that i've been seeing have streamers that i've never fucking seen before yeah it's I so weird it's like I it's think that's also really interesting though have you seen that like twitch uh what's it called like it's like a twitch map basically have you seen that twitch map no uh it, there's a like a big twitch map online i can't remember what it's called but it's essentially like bubbles and it, it represents okay. each streamer with like a little tiny bubble or something and how they all overlap and where they intersect and it's huge it's mm -hmm. a huge map to the point where like there are some people there's so many people who you don't know and like i think yeah. what's interesting about twitch it, what i find is it's such a small community in a way um and it's also gigantic oh, so yeah. Uh, there are like thousands of creators who I've just never heard of before who are like averaging at like, you know, a th like a thousand to two thousand, three thousand views, uh -huh. right? Yeah. But I feel like whenever I'm on Twitch, I'm seeing the same, you know, six or seven big streamers and blah, blah. And I think that's just the portion of Twitch that I'm on. But I yeah. think it's really interesting because even as a small creator where you're not really in a community yet it's crazy how it's all connected 
like with your recommendations and everything like when i was not connected to like any community at all and i was just kind of flying solo you know like i feel like now i'm like i have my feet in like a lot more different communities but like when i was just solo and doing my own thing and very new to twitch like when i started streaming i had not really watched twitch at all right mm -hmm. i just kind of like hopped on and i was like this is the place to stream um so i went in like totally fresh Same. and it was weird because i would see like recommended people who i would like be like oh this stream looks kind of cool and then i would pop in there for like an afternoon and then like not come back for like months and then months down the line i would start following a new streamer and all of a sudden i would see that person is like a mod in their chat or or like yeah. you know a vip or, or stranger that person is friends with that person like it's all you know even like sandwich dude and stuff like that right like you, you know and, and, and different people like you just see them all over twitch and everyone's kind of everywhere and you realize how actually like small the different sections of twitch are but then also there's like these massive other communities that you just don't Exist, know because that you like, just don't i guess know. it's yeah, yeah. And i think that's the algorithm i think the twitch algorithm really like it's not great for discoverability i think the reason why it's not great for discoverability is it kind of puts you in a little block you know it's like yeah. oh you watch ludwig and stuff okay here are all the other streamers we're going to suggest to you and then it kind of trickles down from there right mm -hmm. so like i'm sure if we watch like if i exclusively watched amaranth i'd be getting suggested a whole nother side of twitch or if i was yeah. like you know even if i was watching like more more speedrunners like simply or something like that like it would be the same thing so it's it's quite weird but you realize how small it is and so i think it's weird that like i don't know like i want i wonder what streamers they're using for the ads because i wonder if they're actually big or if it's just like they grabbed them as like a partner exactly and that and that's and... i have no idea and that's that's why i'm like it's so weird to see these ads especially because it's like if they are big enough to be asked to be on an ad and they have their name at the bottom like i was yeah. i was i would expect them to be at least semi-entertaining like you know <laughs> like that yeah. that was the bottom line for me it wasn't the fact that like oh like i don't know who they are but it was just like i was like man like this is such a bad ad doing um, an ad read stresses me out though like i i think like it's like like i could see how it'd be hard to be entertained during an ad read because like i've uh you know it, i've done like uh, I did a partnered charity stream and it was really, really great, but they do a thing where they, they want you to run, a like a video every hour, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, to promote the charity, which is obviously like great makes sense, but it's, it's hard to like, at least for me, like when you're in your content, you know, you, you know, it, it there's like that, like, you know, and your viewers know that like, you have to stop and do this thing, but like, it kind of like it's hard it's hard loop, to yeah. make it seem natural and you're like trying to yeah, yeah. It's, i don't know we're not actors like it's yeah. you know i'm not an actor by any stretch of the imagination like uh i couldn't do that <laughs> I, acting's you know it's not easy to be good it's 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 hard to be bad but it's or it's hard to be really bad but it's not easy to be good either so yeah i don't know going back on uh what you said about like the small communities and stuff um when i first started i was like a youtube kid so like when i came to twitch i was like i made my Same. account and i started um yeah. i started streaming and i didn't watch anybody i didn't watch anybody until like a month or two into me streaming okay um and then i was like you know what? i probably should network and i remember the yeah. weekend that i decided to network was the weekend that i went home to my parents house with joy to like visit for the weekend so i wasn't streaming that weekend i was spending an extra long weekend with my family and so i had time to like watch other people you know because yeah. otherwise yeah but when I first started, I was working long hours at Starbucks, coming home, streaming, going to bed, and then repeating every single day. So I didn't really have time to watch people. Yeah. Um, but I remember the reason I found the people was because of Spider-Man Miles Morales. I went to that game because I wanted yeah. to see other people playing it, and I watched them. And I'm wondering, if you've never watched anybody else, does your placement in the algorithm define of what game in person you start with? You know? Because I because I started yeah. with Alexander Average inside of Chips, and from there I met like every Brom who met me to Phoenix, who met me to like all these other people like Lou Dog, and then yeah. Alex. Uh, what is it? Side of Chips met me to Becca, Diana Games, um, and then like you and Nick, and like like you know like it just branched from there. Yeah. And so now I everyone, don't... you know, because like what if I had chosen another game? Would I have? I'm 
You know, I like think we still would have. I think we still would have found like each other just the way that it, that it works and the way that the community works. Like at least because because like, maybe Side because what if I pretty like I I've watched Chips quite a bit. I I like Chips. I I lurk in his oh, he's awesome, he's, yeah. he's up. But but I don't really know him very well. But like but I've met like because I met you guys through Becca mm. and I met Becca through Tentacle Tech and I met Tentacle Tech through one of my viewers. So mm. for me, like when I started streaming on Twitch, like I think. Twitch was recommended me because I came from YouTube as well. So um, Twitch was recommending me like a lot of their like ambassadors and partner streamers and stuff. Like I think like I remember watching like Elspeth was like one of the first like bigger streamers that I kind of like tuned into like once or twice. And I didn't really know. I didn't really know who was on the platform. Like I knew Ludwig. Yeah. Uh, kind of because that was around the time of the subathon and stuff like that. But like um but you know but then i i had viewers come in and i, I would start streaming and then you want to raid out and i had viewers suggest people to raid and then i would kind of like if i like their stream i would stick around in their raid for like i would pop back later and stuff like that right so that's kind of how i started meeting people um but again it's like it's so interesting because like you just yeah it, it just becomes like such a it's it just so small like it's again like i, I remember like even the other day I I used to raid this guy, uh, Oyets Rob was his name, and I think he was a GeoGuessr streamer. He's this uh, guy from the UK, really nice. Um, and uh, and then the other day I was in a channel and I saw and like literally Rob was one of his alerts. I can't remember whose channel it was. I feel dumb now for not really remembering who channels whose channel it was. Rob was one of his alerts and a mod, <laughs> and I was like, holy shit! Like, it's it's crazy because this was like a a five viewer streamer like me at the time right who i think has done a bit better but i haven't seen him sorry i haven't seen him um online in a while and now it's like all of a sudden he just pops back up and it's like holy cow like it's, yeah. i think it's just such a crazy thing like how small the platform is right and like it's big but it's small and i think when you look at it it's because there are so many you know twitch is advertised like there's millions of people streaming but so many there's there's actually only like uh you know thousands of people streaming as we said before right like because like you it, so many people have um like one viewer that sounds like a, i sound like a dick saying that like i'm not mean like it's like streaming and streaming but like there's like no because one know, of the things that we we i just said not that long ago was when you look at the the statistics the st oh, i can never say the word statistics uh, you and I are both in like the one percent, yeah. Which is crazy because there's such a huge difference from like me to like um, Namir Comedy, who averages like two hundred, or Emma Rome, who well, averages like you know. That's the thing. It's like you you look at it like we're in the one percent, and I I only average like right now like twenty average viewers. Same, right? same. Um, so <laughs> which like, is you tells you how many fucking people are streaming that are under that number, which is insane. You yeah, know? and I think, and um, the thing is, like, that's why I say streaming and streaming, because honestly, you don't even have to, if you want to hit affiliate, you don't have to put in too much work. Like, it's, um, which, which I know seems, like, rough, because I know a lot of people are struggling to hit affiliate, but, like, if you, you know focus in on it right and you say okay i'm gonna hit affiliate and you get like you you get like hey talk to your mom talk to your dad talk to your brother you know get get your second laptop running right if you have a laptop or something that you're not streaming off of mm. like just pull up your stream on those things right or be like hey mom i'm streaming now or hey guys i'm streaming now you don't have to watch you don't have to be in my chat but it would mean the world to me if you just like had my stream open so i could hit affiliate you know yeah getting affiliate um, is super easy after that point is the hard part yeah after that point is the hard part and i think yeah. too like honestly like it you should be streaming because you want to make good content yeah uh well that's no like you stream for your personal reasons but like but like if you want to be big on twitch or be successful on twitch i think you have to be putting out uh unique content or content that you know you has value to someone right and the I think way like, you said that was correct i just think the wording was wrong with the, the what you, yeah. you started to say i think you're correct in the sense that if you're gonna stream do whatever you want but if you yeah. want to if you if you're worried about the numbers then you're trying to make it something that it's it's not fun for you you want to make it into something 
And if you want to make it into something, then you have to put the work in. You can't just be like, why yeah. isn't this working? And we see that uh, you and I have seen that a lot. A lot of people have been doing that. I think, and, and that literally, this is the, this is what happened with Brahms thing last time we started talking about this topic and then the whole thing became Twitch related. Talk, yeah, and we'll, get, we'll pivot in a minute because yeah, I, yeah, well, I, I, I don't, like I don't mind about, talking yeah. about it. It's only been, oh fuck, wait, we were talking for 40 minutes Half already. Hour, is that, yeah. It's 40 minutes now? <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Okay, okay, okay. But no, okay. but like that is, it's, it's, there's a lot of people who come and go who are like, oh, I want to stream for fun, but then they're always like, ah. Oh, I'm trying to get a fit. Like, I, I can't. Why don't people? And it's like, why are you worrying about that if you were trying to do it for fun? Because that's what yeah. I start. When I started, I was doing it for fun because I was already trophy hunting like crazy. And I always played video games when I came home from work. That was what yeah. I wanted to do. I had, I literally, Joy can attest to this. When I was like, oh, if I hit affiliate, it's probably going to happen naturally. It'll probably take like, uh, probably take like a year or two because I, I saw that a lot of people had been streaming for 10 years and they're finally mm -hmm. a partner and stuff. And I was like, it's going to take a while. So I was just kind of doing it. And then like just from me finding other people and just talking to them and like hanging out, I got affiliate. And then they started going more and more and more. And then I was yeah. like, oh, I can take this more seriously now. I want to do this more seriously. And then, then I made those decisions. But uh, so well, many people are like, oh, I'm going to do this because I want to. But then all you hear them talking about is their statistics. And I'm like, bro chill <laughs> yeah chill focus on your content first yeah. and foremost that's the most important thing is is be making content that you would want to watch i think like yeah. okay i have I, here's my here's my streaming advice for starting streaming one <laughs> one go and uh like find what you want to stream and do that and, and and think about your content and like what you want to be doing um that's the first thing just just think about your stream the second thing is like really always be looking for ways to improve and if you're and like when i started i'm I'm not a tech savvy person at all me either like, i really struggle with that stuff but there are so many good youtube videos and channels to help you out with not even the tech side of streaming but just like everything you know all free like go yeah like if you're starting streaming like go check out like harris heller go check out like stream scheme you know like those um those channels all have like really really good tips for for people who are starting out right mm -hmm. uh and just and and i found incredibly helpful um it's you know i think it's it you know and networking again is a big thing and by networking i don't mean like going into people's chat and like self-promoting like Dude. never fucking do that <laughs> i do that. i have a rule i try to actively not talk about my stream in other people's chats so like if even if I get a shout out, I kind of feel uncomfortable because like, oh, same. I, don't, I don't like Dude. it's not that's not the place to do it. The the way you if you're there to network, the like, you know, and one, you should just be there to, because you like their content and you want to just make friends and find, you know, get to know yeah, someone. find other people who you like to watch. Don't yeah. look at it as networking. Find other people who you like to watch and yeah. then you'll make friends because at the end of the day, you just want to make friends. Networking is about making friends on Twitch because. If you're just trying to find people that you can steal viewers from, you're doing it wrong. Like yeah, that's agreed. not, <laughs> I, I have a lot of people who have come to me and I've been like, oh yeah, this person just came in and just like, was like, oh yeah, I'm streaming. Come watch me. And people will leave and it's like, whoa, oh, so like, you can't, you can't steal viewers. Like it's, nobody's going to, if somebody has a streamer, like you're not going to be able to go into their chat and be no, like, Hey, I'm you going can't. live. And no, like, because people no like what they're used to flip over. Yeah. P people like what they're used to. That's why people like, like if, if you found someone who you like watching more than likely, that's all, who, that's the only person you're going to watch. The only times that like I start watching someone new is if they're doing something extremely different that I've never seen before or they're in a time slot that I'm now looking at. And now with me being in a different time, like frame, like I can watch a lot more people than I normally, like yeah. I get to watch you and Becca a lot more, which is super sick. You yeah. Know? And I think like people have their people too. And this is my other thing, right? It's like, it's like when I rated into Becca that one time, I just like, it was like Becca and you, like were two people who I like kind of immediately clicked with mm. where it was like, I rated and I was like, Oh yeah, these people have like very similar sensibilities and we get along really really well just like naturally you mm -hmm. know and and so you just spend time in the channel and and then it's one of those things where like you know you or becca might raid over or whatever i'll raid into you like the, the, if you want to self-promote in a stream the best way to self-promote someone's stream is to is to raid over into them that's like literally raid into them and say nothing else <laughs> and say nothing else raid into them 
then it, you you know just start chatting and don't even mention your stream unless they ask you about it and then just yeah. kind of say like hey here's what we did and that's that's it and it was really fun and then you and then you ask them about their stream yeah. because literally everyone everyone in chat wants you to be like when you're in a chat you're in some like their that community right essentially each stream is a community yeah and so going into that community it's like you the best way to yeah, it's just to just join the community, like, and uh, and you have to be part of every community, but, but I think like, but but again, like when you start, you know, like I I have so many friends now from like, you know, your stream and Becca's stream who will go live, and it was super quick for them to hit affiliate because they're already a part of these communities, so it's just like they they have their friends, like actual like you know Twitch friends who they've made who will just come and visit their communities and like you know I'll if I have a friend or a viewer who's trying to hit affiliate, I'll just pull up their stream and just lurk in it, right? Like it's it's that's the the best way to when you're starting out is to just just be on the platform and and talk with people and you know yeah. and and actually make connections because yeah, it's, it's it's such an important part of Twitch. You can grow completely without it, but it's hard. It's really hard. Oh, 100 um, But yeah, anyway, I don't know. Yeah, just uh, yeah, I watch video, watch YouTube videos. Like, if you want to start streaming, check out the YouTube videos. Um, ninety percent of growing on Twitch is because of what you do off stream, and I think and, and that goes for like anything on Twitch is like whatever you're doing on Twitch. Uh. 90 percent of it is is what's not happening when you're live you know that's the fun mm -hmm. part when you get to just kind of sit back and relax and then do your thing yeah but stream should but be yeah, the fun part yeah stream should be the fun part and then you do everything else off stream and that's like exactly. all like figuring out your overlays and all the alerts and all the you know editing and videos that you might be doing if you're doing that and you know yeah but precisely yeah. But anyway, talking about ads again. Yeah, um, ads. Read it back to ads. So oh, there's ad two. There. There's two that have popped up. One that never stops playing, and I know it's because I clicked on it once. Uh -huh. But the other one is one that's that been popping mistake, up recently. Yeah, I know. Just um, on it. <laughs> the other ones were ones that have come up recently that just made me laugh. I talked about previous funny ads before on the podcast, but one that recently popped up was the the Taco Bell. They have two coming out right now. That are obviously hitting like the college crowd demographic, you know. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but they're both with two girls. Okay, one is the one in bed where like they just woke up, and the one was bringing them breakfast in bed, and they're like, "Hey, roomie, like you know, I brought you back." But they're like, "Oh my god, like thank you so much," and they're like eating and they're doing close ups like the coffee and like the cinnabon bites and like those different things, and they're like, the <laughs> the ones like. You know, I had a crazy dream last night and they're like, what? And they're like, I had a dream that you gave me all of your Cinnabon bites. And then the girl, <laughs> okay. the other girl goes, <laughs> the other girl goes, yeah, that definitely was a dream. And she goes, was it? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's the entire fucking that's ad. And I'm like, that's so yeah. weird. And Joy and I have been laughing about it. And then the other one, because it's, they, they have two, the other one is like, late night because obviously taco bell is normally like a late night food um i've never gone to taco bell in the fucking morning i think it's so weird um uh, yeah i don't know i've never <laughs> i've only been to taco bell like once or twice it's like right it's like one of those things that you get when you're drunk taste. that's literally yeah, like yeah, yeah um but the other one is like two girls sitting on like a back porch patio type of thing uh -huh. And they're eating and they're like, you got a, like a, a crunch wrap. And she goes, yeah, that's a very Libra thing of you. To do. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like wow. so serious about it. And they're like, yeah, that's because you're like a Virgo. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah oh, man. Uh, dude, I laughed so hard. Joy and I were dying. We're like, what, what are these ads? To do? I'm, like, I'm, yeah, I'm a Supreme. <laughs> <laughs> Supreme. <laughs> oh, you're a Virgo. I'm a Supreme. <laughs> Leo's getting soft shells. <laughs> That's fucking wild. I've I never have got into the horoscope things. I I've known Neither some I. people who like swear by it and i have yeah. no problem I like you know if that's your thing, power to you. But also I really hate when people um base their life off of it. Yeah, like okay, like, like their life choices, if, I should say. I don't mind if your identity is a like if you go like I'm a I'm a Libra or I'm a Scorpio or you know what I mean? Like I think that's fine. Like if, if you see identify a specific way, sure. But what I don't like is I used to work at a grocery store and there was always this um 
this girl there who is this woman who was working there and she would like was really really into horoscopes but to the point where like you didn't really get to be yourself because they already had an i a preconceived idea of who you yeah. were because of your star sign they base really they base like that, it like you know? that that's the extremity of it i think but that that, yeah. that goes for anything because like obviously yeah you and i both agree that like you live your life however the fuck you want no one as long as you're not hurting anybody or yourself i don't give yeah. a shit i don't give a shit and so and i think anyone should be able to do that but it's when 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 you are there's always going to be extreme cases for every single type of person um and i think that basing all of your life decisions off of what day of the month of like the stars aligning yeah. is right. yeah. so extreme like that well, i i think as as humans like what it comes down to is as humans we just like to be we 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 like to have understanding and to some degree we like to have like order or be placed you know yeah I mean? like, 100% like, if that works for loves... you great that works for you yeah. don't force it on me though <laughs> no it's why everyone loves like harry potter and and all that stuff so much like cuz it's like oh i'm a hufflepuff or i'm a oh yeah yeah you know? and it's it's another it's like, thing to identify with people like labels a lot people like people labels people do really a lot. like labels yeah and i yeah. Think, i think the horoscope things are just another label it's like the same mm -hmm. as like you know the it's something you can latch on it's something you can identify like describes with describes you well yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. um, i because i'm a leo because i was born in 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 august like right at the cusp like i'm a i'm a what is it called like a trailing leo or whatever like i'm right, right before right. the other one was, but was mercury in retrograde when you were retrograde born, <laughs> there's mercury in gatorade um <laughs> mercury is a gatorade right now do you know mercury is a gatorade yeah. um but uh i hope there's no mercury in my gatorade <laughs> i think a lot of people who are these extreme are drinking mercury in their gatorade but um anyway the uh <laughs> the <laughs> what is it uh shit what was i gonna say oh um i've had I, someone straight up like you were saying i've had someone come up to me and be like hey like it's nice to meet you like it was a group function or something like an event and I was just like, hi, like, I'm Josh. And they're like, hi, like, do you mind me asking what is your star sign? Like, what are you? And I was like, oh, I'm a Leo. And they literally turned around and left. That's wild. Yeah. Because see, it was someone that. who wasn't compatible. And I was like, we're not going to yeah, fucking date. Like, we're, <laughs> we're just having a conversation. <laughs> yeah. I, I, listen, I genuinely, genuinely believe that, like, there are some people who you just meet and you immediately know you're not going to get along with them. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, Hundred percent. Definitely a thing. It has never but... matched the horoscope thing, though. Let me add. I've, I've actually, I think it's an interesting concept. I even have a book of birthdays that show all the stuff and like gives a description. Mine's yeah. semi accurate, but they kind of keep it vague. I think that's that's for a I, reason. They always keep it vague. But yeah, it's the 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 partnerships where it's like, oh, you're gonna you be really good friends with this or this or this. It has never matched with anybody who has the no. correlating thing ever yeah i think honestly like you know if if you're if you walk up to me and and uh dip out because i'm not a corresponding star sign hey that's totally fine because yeah whatever we're not gonna get along anyway if yeah if you, if you act that you way know, you're like, never hey, gonna get along you, you do you man like, uh. i'm not gonna you know that's that's but yeah i always think that's wild like i, I personally <laughs> like i i really like i'm not a big horoscope person i do really like one the I think the Hogwarts house one is really interesting because I think that one you kind of have a aspect of choice to it, which yeah. I think is kind of cool. But I also really like the like, what is it, the Myers Briggs personality? That test. that is out of everything, out of like everything that, that has been the most like spot on with my personality, and it's yeah, changed twice since I've been younger. But when you're younger, yeah. you're still growing up and stuff. Well. And that's what I like about it is it's I like that it can change. And I yeah. think that I think that with these personality tests and stuff, change is really important, right? Mm. Like I think like and that's what I don't like about star signs is that you're stuck you with that for change. life. You're stuck. <laughs> yeah. Whether or not you you yeah. choose, you're stuck as an Aquarius. Whereas like, yeah, my Myers Briggs personality, I think, has changed like two or three times now. Yeah. Uh, like I've it just it's constantly changing, right? Uh, mm. so but yeah, uh, I don't know. They're weird, man. They're weird. I as, as long as it's not hurting anybody, right like whatever, like you know, it's whatever. Um, All right, hand, hand. Let's look up our horoscope for the day. One second. Oh, for a, for a personal. Yeah, yeah. You're a Leo, Leo, right? You said. Yeah. Let me look up mine. You look up yours. Okay. Sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna read you yours. You ready? I got it. Oh, you already it. got it already. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. 
Hi. You have never been the sort to accept what you are told just because the person doing the telling is considered to be an expert. Wow, this is like really on brand with what we were just talking about. Uh, if <laughs> Isn't it so sense, funny how it's yeah, always it's like, generalized? <laughs> if your sixth sense tells you they are talking rubbish today, you must not be afraid to let them know. All right, if I start spewing shit, you just tell me, Josh, right? You just tell me straight up. Uh, the, uh, mine is, the most important thing today is that you make a serious effort to get your message across. And with communications, <laughs> planet Mercury linked to the <laughs> ruling Uranus, <laughs> that should be quite easy. Oh, my God. Make sure everyone Mercury. knows what the truth is as you see it. Hey, I'll tell my truth. I feel like I just did that. I feel I'll like I was hard, hard on that content creation. Oh, today. my God, dude. That's so funny. You know, it's it's one of those things. Um, it's it's okay. So here, this is a more political, and we won't touch yeah. on it for too long. But I think that I this is my I platform. I can do whatever. Most controversial podcast ever. No, it's not know? gonna be controversial. <laughs> um, but <laughs> okay, so like, I'm not religious, but I have nothing against religion. Okay, yeah, I think any way, type of here. faith. Yeah, any type of faith. Like, if that's yours and that's what you identify with and stuff, go for it. I'm. It's cool. It's just not yeah. personally mine. But I've had my dad's a pastor. My dad's my grandfather's a bishop. I've had multiple conversations about theology with them because I grew up in that. And like, that's what it, you know. My parents know I'm not religious, and they're they're probably mm -hmm. not okay with it. But like, they're they're respectful of it. Just like I'm respectful to my dad. Like, I'm not going to bash him for being a pastor, even though I don't agree with it. You know? Yeah. Um. Yeah. But one of the best things I love the one of the things that I loved about the Bible was the fact that all of the parables and the morals and stuff like that were like metaphors where it depending on what day of the year you read it it could relate <laughs> to something that is you know yours yeah and yeah. that's the exact same with horoscopes you know where it's like it's supposed to be something that helps you get through the day it's supposed to help yeah. you like and and that's i think it's the same thing with like tarot cards and stuff like that it's it's supposed to help you it's not supposed to identify exactly what you're feeling it's supposed to inflict a like Oh, yeah. this realization. And I think that's what it's for. But people, I think, are taking it more in a literal sense. And yeah, it's like you you're basing it off of your life choices. And it's like that's not it's supposed to bring up things that you're thinking about rather than making yeah. you make a certain decision because you got that card or you got you that you gotta remember where your horoscope's coming from too yep. right like most likely it's someone who's been hired to write horoscopes for everyone for the mm -hmm. time of that and like they might have like some background in astrology or tarot but it's all interpretive anyway so yeah. you're, you're essentially instead of letting the stars decide you're kind of just letting someone else decide you know if yeah. that makes sense like or, interpretation or yeah, it's like so. reading a good book or a pair uh, uh, a poem and you're like, wow, that resonated with me because of this going on with my life right now. You don't you don't read a poem and go, oh, my God, I need to have fries today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. in the stars. I need to have cheese fries today. <laughs> <laughs> Arby's, let's go. Yeah, you know, I, it's and, and it's funny because that's an extreme. But then when you look at it that way, you're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Yeah. Um, anyway, moving on from that topic, more about more about ads. Um, the other one, the other ad that I've, I've been seeing, and I want to hear about what you've been seeing on online as well. This is a uh -huh. YouTube one that I'm getting a lot. OK, um, have you heard of mud water? No. OK, I haven't. <laughs> I've, I have to admit, I actually have YouTube premium, so I don't get. Ads oh, on OK. So uh, the I only reason YouTube I'm seeing so it, much, I'm like, I, I just opted for. Yeah, premium, yeah. So I, I have an ad ads. blocker on my 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 browser, my computer. But when I watch on my TV with joy, we'll put up YouTube on our like one of the apps on the smart TV. And yeah. like that, you can't put an ad blocker on. So like it's just kind of doing that. Um, what's mud water? So it's like a it's literally mud. <laughs> But it also has okay. like herbs and minerals and like mushrooms and stuff that give you energy, but aren't like oh, what taxing the, uh. on your body. And like I've had like obviously I had a juice bar. I've <laughs> I've I've been <laughs> vegan before. Like I've had lots of weird shit in my mouth and in my body before. Like a lot. Don't take uh -huh. that out of context. That sounds yeah, so fucking uh, bad. Yeah, um, a lot of weird shit in my mouth. I've before, yeah. <laughs> had a lot of weird shit in my mouth. Um, but like. I can so I could understand why that would be a good thing and like there's a lot of nutrients and, and stuff that come from this especially minerals and they're like you think of like mud masks and stuff like a lot of people eat mud like it's some places it's a snack which is weird but like it is a thing and so I was like oh I want to check this out because the ad would had like it's like a talking thing and I clicked it once and now I get them every fucking day 
and they're like five minute long ads where it's just this guy from like he, like he sounds like a surfer guy and he's like yeah. i'm so fucking tired He's like, I grew so, up, we live in this society that's go, go, go. And I, I'm constantly awake. I never get sleep. I haven't had a dream in like a week. And it's him like sitting by a fire, writing a poem. And it's oh like, and he's like, so that's why me and my friends made this company called Mudwater. And everyone's hate- always like, what's in your cup, dude? <laughs> I'm looking at the Mudwater thing now. Are you looking I, at it? Yeah. It. yeah. I hate that they didn't spell it like water normally. Yeah, it's they like spelled it W T R. W T R. I was confused yeah. about that, and so I'm looking at the my the ingredients. And there's actually not any water in it. I guess it's cause you no. Like, it's a powder you, you put in water and yeah. you mix it. It's like G fuel. Literally, it's like G fuel, but like it's supposed to be a, a. It's like having tea. Basically, it's tea with more minerals and nutrients. That's what it is. You know, it has some caffeine, right. but it's not as aggressive as coffee beans like that kind of caffeine do you get it like actually it actually sounds not terrible like, no that's at it, like it's yeah got, like cocoa and chai that's why i looked and, at it i was like this sounds actually like pretty good like i'll cinnamon. look at it but like the ads are so dumb and long and like i'm like bro chill i don't need your life story just tell me what the product is yeah it's, it's always also, the same like, i don't know like i would have called it i would have called it mud I just mud I would've it would have been simpler water. yeah Cause it, it looks like, cause like when you're looking at it, it looks like mud water. Like it actually, it looks like mud water. Yeah. But, but it looks it's like watery really hot chocolate. Like chocolate. Yeah. It's, it's like really watered down like hot chocolate. That's what it looks like. Hot chocolate tea yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. 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 But bad. It's, but it was just such weird a weird branding. ad that always pops up. And that's the thing. Like I, I probably, it's probably really hard to like, um, get mud as like a trademark thing unless you spell it differently from mud. Um, and that's probably why they did that. But Anyway, have you been seeing any ads recently? Uh, have I been seeing any ads? Not like no. I guess that's what's great is like I I kind of escape all the ads. Like, cause uh, I mean, unless I, I'll get like the occasional ad on Twitch, but like if I'm being honest, I just don't pay attention to them when they pop up. Yeah. Um. So I couldn't tell you what they were, but like, but yeah, I mean, YouTube Premium has been the big thing that stops me from hitting all those ads. Yeah uh it's it's it makes youtube so much better like i (laughs) yeah yeah. twitch has uh turbo as well which like i guess if you're bouncing around to a lot of channels that you're not subscribed to then twitch turbo is good because it lets you skip ads but um but uh yeah youtube premium was a game changer (laughs) it's like up there with like spotify now which is like one of those like uh subscriptions i probably won't get rid of because because i i hate ads like i i've worked on them they're just like terrible to work on there i mean some ads are great like if an ad's done really really well um they stay with you forever you know like i think like there's one that i love which is uh i think it's a new zealand commercial for like cock you know like deck uh like yeah like yeah, yeah. talking yeah like to like you know the <laughs> adhesive but the because cock. in new zealand they're always like you know they say it like cock like so they're like and they say deck like dick right they're like oh we're gonna go cock my dick so so it's like this whole running ad campaign of this guy talking about cocking his dick and like having his neighbor over to help uh, help with his dick uh and like it just i don't know it just killed me it was really funny uh that one's like me there's also one for uh a vacuum where it starts off like a horror movie. So this guy's like going in to like um, exercise this girl who's been possessed, right? And she's like walking on the ceiling and then sliding all around the ceiling. And then the camera pans up and she's on the ceiling because somebody's vacuuming their floor. And the, <laughs> it's, it, the suction is so insane that it's it's like attaching her to the ceiling. It's pretty good. So That's funny. Yeah. There's but some good I, ads, but then there's just some weird ones, man. Speaking of ads and, and promotion and stuff, I want to talk about... I, we talked about this a little bit earlier. I want to talk about Morbius. Have you heard yeah, about yeah. Morbius? So I've seen yeah. the trailer for the movie, and I am, yeah. I've been excited. I'm not a huge fan of Jared Leto, but I uh, I was like, ooh, this uh, I, I, I'm be interested in, in seeing this movie because I like Marvel, so I was just like, yeah. But Morbius. You said that the there's stuff going with the nation. It? Yeah, so it's 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 got the the hashtag Morbius sweep has been popular right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I really hope I don't mess this up and say this one, but like basically, uh, it's it's made four trillion dollars at the box office. And four has, trillion. Yeah, so 
It hasn't actually, but like, oh. basically, Morbius has tanked hard. Like, it's it's tanked really bad. It's not doing well. It's not a good film. But everyone's uh, online has been hyping it up as like the greatest film ever, and like kind of memeing. And the tweets that have come out of it, and everything is just, is just amazing. It's like peak internet, right? Like, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, some of them are like, you know what's this one this guy is like be uh this guy posts a picture of his car window smashed and it says be careful out there everyone i had two more BS tickets in my car and someone broke in and left four more <laughs> uh, and uh, there's another one that's like uh <laughs> Uh, there's, there's, there's a picture of uh like a reserved seating thing for a morbius screening and it's like there's there's four people who bought tickets and they're both like it, it's the back row and then literally right in front of that one and it's like i'm desperately trying to know the story of the four people seeing morbius tonight at 10 30 and elected to sit like right next to each other but <laughs> in different rows like it's just like it's just really funny and then there's a whole morbius discord which is just got out of control and so yeah. you can join the morbius discord and then if you get to level 10 in the morbius discord you can enter this exclusive morbius lounge and get access to using the gifts and stuff so everyone just constantly in the morbius discord just like memeing trying to it's it just it's great it's 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 my favorite thing on the internet right now it's That's just so, so ridiculous I, i've never heard of it like to be honest yeah, yeah. i know that um so Sony, I love Sony as a company for like the games they put out and stuff. But when it comes to films, they've always been under par. Let's just be honest. Like their company, like Venom was yeah. a disappointment. Spider-Man, no. the, the Andrew Garfield, there were some good things about it, but there are also just some bad things. I, and, yeah, I mean, I liked, I mean, Sony did the original Spider-Man as well. Like I think like, like the, the Tobey Maguire, I think, okay. I think the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies were not bad. Like they yeah. were entertaining, but they were also from like a pre MCU era where we didn't know any better. So yeah. like, you know, like I think the amazing Spider-Man two was probably coming out like right when Captain America and stuff and Iron Man were starting to like hit, you know, yeah. um, maybe after, but definitely amazing Spider-Man. And so I think like, um, uh, like we didn't know any better. We did. We were kind of spoiled. We weren't spoiled yet with, with actual, like a good superhero films you know uh yeah and spider sam the sam raimi spider-man's good but the uh the andrew garfield ones are objectively not very good but um but i don't i don't know like what would you because you, you're a big marvel fan i i am the biggest spider-man nerd ever yeah, <laughs> i fucking do love you, spider-man do you go and watch those sony films still i i i own all the spider-man and venom movies um i love them I mm-hmm. the Venom I'm not a huge fan of, um the new ones I'm not I watched them once both Did of them the second the Let There Be Carnage yeah I saw both um yeah. once and I'll never see them again probably, um <laughs> but you but, own them <laughs> but I own them because it was I wanted to watch them and I didn't want to go to the theater um right okay I see I got gotcha, you but then whereas Andrew Garfield's movies I've watched those so many times and I love mm-hmm. them um Andrew I think he was a great oh fantastic uh, Spider-Man. yeah. Um, yeah. And Andrew Garfield, he gets a lot of like shit, but I think for his universe, it was good, in my yeah. opinion. And I, mean, I really I liked what they did with the character and how they had him. And uh, <laughs> spoiler think- alert, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The whole the whole sequence with Gwen. Yeah, I have. I've cried so many times. <laughs> It is. I, I loved that. I thought it was so. I never thought they would do that in a fucking Marvel movie. I got more emotional. This is a spoiler for No Way Home. Yes. Like, so huge spoiler. That, yeah. Just, but I got yeah. more emotional when they resolved that in No Way Home yes. with him saving. Uh, I cried MJ in, in so that. many times during that movie. I'm not yeah, even lying. That one was more than than the entire of the Amazing Spider Man two. But also, it's weird. Like. I think okay. One, I think those movies, the the Andrew Garfield Spider Man movies, are um, they they rely really heavily on the charisma. Like I think the charisma between like uh, and the relationship between Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield carries that movie. Oh, 100 uh, They just they have such good ke- uh, chemistry. That's what I meant to say. Chemistry, not charisma. They, the chemistry in that movie between all the actors just really carries that film. Um, 
but I didn't cry in Amazing Spider-Man 2. But do you find like now that you're getting older, you cry more at things? <laughs> I've also been I've always been a very emotional person, but privately. Yeah. So I've I've always cried in movies a lot. Um, yeah. But in front of people, obviously toxic masculinity plays a part. But um, yeah, um, like when I'm with other people, I don't. But like in the theaters of No Way Home, I cried like five times. And I am proud of that because that was the culmination of my entire yeah. childhood. And also yeah. like that that was everything to me. Like that movie was everything I wanted and more. And yeah. I, I had been waiting for something like that. And I've watched that movie since it came out. I bought it as soon as it came out. I pre-ordered it. Yeah. I, I've watched that probably like eight times. <laughs> I that fucking love that movie. That was me with Endgame. I got really hyped and emotional over Endgame and stuff. Yeah. I still get like chills when I see like people reacting to that. Same, dude. Yeah. That The but, whole um, Marvel series, I love. I know there's some Disney like cheesy bits, like obviously. But yeah. like what they have built, they have a platform for. My worry is that from here on out, because they're starting like a whole new sequence, it will get Disney-fied. And that's what I'm worried about. Because like I'm, have you seen the the new trailer for the um the Disney Plus show, the uh Miss Marvel or whatever? Yeah, I have. That I worries that, me. <laughs> I don't know, because I think Miss Marvel looks uh pretty stylized and kind of interesting. I think like uh, here's the thing. Like I had I real I this is my one like you know I I had really big superhero fatigue like right when I was so excited for Infinity War mm. you know like I'd read a, I'd been it was a big comic book uh fan for a bit there in college and stuff and so I'd like read a lot of those Marvel comics and like Infinity Saga and stuff and I was like so stoked for Infinity War and for yeah. like a massive like I I basically I thought the battle in I thought the end of Endgame was going to be an Infinity War, you know, and then and then that's when I thought that that sequence was going to happen, which like narratively I realize makes no sense now looking back yeah. on it, but like, but like that's what I thought was going to be there, and then I thought you know oh something else comes after it, blah blah anyway, um so I was actually kind of like disappointed with Infinity War. Like it was fine, but like I was waiting for it to really hit that like epic, like yeah moment. No, and I, I get you, but now you why... need it though. Like well, it, yeah, it, it, it's it's it's, it's great. needed. It's great I'm really movie. glad they broke it into two though. And I think I think why I struggle like I really love those like big oneers that Marvel does, like where you have like all you know, like you have the Avengers assembling like in like where in the first one it was like them on the the bridge outside of Grand Central Station or whatever, and then. And you have that like big wonder of like going through the city following them. And then, you know, they had an age of Ultron as well, where they're all like fighting in the circle and the Yeah. And then and I really love those shots. And I feel like Infinity War didn't have that. And so I kind of felt like I was left hanging a little bit and didn't get I was like promised all these characters on screen at one time. And they were kind of together and kind of interacting, but we never got they were, that big. They were all in like, like three different spots. Yeah, they were so all it was they were scattered, which I think yeah. was the point because they were they they're unified together, yeah. and I think that was but what I they think, were trying to portray because at the end they're all together, no one scattered. Such a better job there. of that in Endgame, I think. Well, that's like, what I'm, I'm that's what I mean. I think that yeah. they did that on purpose because they fail in Infinity War, but they yeah, succeed like they in fail. Endgame. Yeah, but I was I was fatigued by the end of Infinity War. Mm. And so because because like I was like I, I was pumped for Infinity War and then Infinity War came out and then the wait between Infinity War and Endgame was like long enough because I think there was like there was like three or four movies that came out in between weren't there or there was at least Ant-Man and uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Oh, and Captain Marvel. Oh, Captain Marvel. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, not a big cap I'm not a big fan of Captain Marvel. But like but I think um, but like uh, by those times I was kind of over it. And so when Endgame rolled around. I had wished I had done like I'd wish I'd gone to like opening night and done that whole thing. But instead, I just kind of like went one day casually into the movie yeah. theater. And it was like it was a, still a great experience. And I was still so hyped. But it, I think it could have been like fucking unreal seeing it with a crowd on like opening night. I think yeah. that would have been like the best movie theater experience ever. And I feel like I missed out on that because I was dumb. And and then I was like worried after Endgame. I was like, OK, this is all done i now don't need to watch any more superhero movies i'm just kind of done and then they were smart and did uh far from home after that and and it's so easy to watch a spider-man movie and get hooked back in even though like you know 
Far from Home was like it was pretty good, but it could it could have been could have been some something about those John Watts ones like like No Way Home was the first Spider Man movie where I was like they really nailed this, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know something about uh, Homecoming was good, but but and so was Far from Home, but they didn't quite like it was always missing something for me. Whereas I felt like No Way Home really hit that. Um, I think it's the character stuff. They really nailed the character stuff in that movie, but. But yeah, I don't know. Do you have a favorite? Like, who, what's your favorite non Spider Man Marvel movie? My favorite non Spider Man Marvel movie. Oh, fuck. Is it Morbius? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I, I, I honestly think it was uh, Endgame. But like, Endgame yeah. isn't as good without Infinity War. You know what I'm saying? Just like Endgame isn't just, as good without every other MC movie. Yeah, MC well, and that's the same with uh, the No Way Home. If you haven't seen any of the other superhero movies, including Endgame and stuff, it makes no sense. Including ones that are not in the MCU, which are like uh, Daredevil from Netflix or or fucking. Yeah. Uh, um, it's like the culmination of everything the Marvel like together in one. You know? Do you watch the? Have you been watching the Disney Plus shows? Yes, I've watched all of them. The only one that I'm slowly behind is uh, one episode off for um, what's it called? Moon Knight. Uh, Moon Knight. I'm one episode off. I'm I'm really liking Moon Knight. It's pretty. It's pretty good. Moon Knight is fantastic. Um, yeah, there all, all those Marvel shows are really really good. Yeah. I think like, I think the fact that now they can kind of do a superhero show with a TV budget really opens up so many doors for them. A hundred percent. Like almost the better way to tell stories now um yeah. for marvel but they don't have that budget that they can do with movies so but um yeah oh fuck i was gonna say something marvel marbius uh, <laughs> oh i can't remember what it was this is gonna really bother me but yeah i think uh um oh oh i know it was did you see the trailer for the new thor wait did that come out yeah the teaser just dropped today oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh god. Thor. I'm okay, so that's what I'm doing after this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Oh all right, god. Don't, yeah, yeah. But yeah. look at the poster cuz the poster is amazing for it. Right now, like go look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it says Lo Love and Thunder, right? Yeah, Thor Love and Thunder poster. It love looks and fantastic. Thunder poster. Okay. I love I love Taika Waititi. He's my favorite director. Oh, um, he's f he, actor-wise as well. <gasps> yeah. Oh my god, dude! It looks like Star Lord. It looks like Guardians of the Galaxy, dude. It's it's got like uh very like He Man vibes, but also like super Flash Gordon as well. Yeah, it well, looks so have you good. played the Guardians of the Galaxy video game? I haven't. I watched you play that one a little bit. I I I shit you not. That was one of my favorite games ever. I it was yeah, so I, good, and I was saying it was really good. I I played the PS5 version, and my goal is to play the. Uh, this like um it again on ps4 because um, you have PS4. two versions and i can get a platinum on both so i was like fuck it why not i love it that much oh okay i see yeah what um yeah what i was gonna hang on i have another question actually after this but 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 um fuck, what was i gonna say oh fuck it i know what i was gonna do you do you like do you have a favorite game I like to ask people what their favorite <sighs> game is like do you have a i don't have a favorite game i think on uh, my my games that i love like a culmination together um i have so many and so many different varieties of genres and stuff from puzzle indie to shooter to like you know that it's hard to pinpoint but um yeah i there's just there's a shit ton i there's a shit ton of games that uh i play that i'm i'm in love with i normally go buy my favorite games from the past year so like 20 2021 uh, mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Ken of Bridge of Spirits, Omno. Um, Omno is good. Omno, I hope to. I've messaged that guy so many times that I'm probably sure. I'm sure that he's like pissed off, and the he developer? hasn't responded to me. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't responded to me. <laughs> but I've messaged message him just like, hey, I I don't know how I can help, but I will help. Send me any information you can. I would love for you to make this into a full scale game, like a big one um and like really yeah oh, like you want like a bigger see i think i really you, you know what you should try like i i really like omno because it's short it's like that's why i like really? journey as well yeah oh. like if you, you've played journey right yeah yeah like i like that it's a short experience I'm, I'm i'm really a big champion for like short games though like i really like a game 
where I can yeah. sit down and beat it in like one to two playthroughs, you know, yeah. or, or like or like sessions. Like I, but you should try. Have you tried the Pathless? Oh yeah, yeah, I played that. That one's really good as well. Yeah, I was gonna say like I I really like everything like Annapurna does mm. uh, generally, and so um like and i think like omno really captures the spirit of like journey and stuff like you know um it's kind of like a mix of those i i think i don't know like i don't know what what they would do to make it longer like because you were kind of just omno you just kind of collected stuff right i have a few ideas um and i i messaged him about that but i my my goal is to uh if i can i'm in their discord i'm gonna make like a long extended idea like plot and like post it and be like yo um <laughs> but uh yeah no it eh. there's What's a lot to it i think game like this is i've been asking people this question a lot like lately like if you could develop a game like yourself like that could be anything right like we'll say it's it's not like like if you want to be vr it can but we'll say like you're like you you think of a game like this is the game that i want like the game of my dreams right now what would it be it would be my idea for what omno 2 would be <laughs> okay <All right>. so, <laughs> so, what's your omno 2 idea let me, let me give, um, let me give you the pitch oh god um here i'll i'll cut you a deal uh for yeah. everyone listening uh we have a if you if you like the, if you like the podcast you like hearing the conversations you like hearing the guests and stuff it's not a free endeavor I had to pay monthly for um, having this spread to each platform of choice and uploading and taking the time to plan all these things. If you'd like to support the podcast, I'm plugging myself quickly. Um, we have a Patreon. It's listed below. Um, you guys can get the podcast episodes earlier um, as well as bonus episodes, which we're about to go record, and we're going to continue this conversation on there. Um, and uh, you'll get to hear get a little bit more about Patreon that. Patreon, so you can hear the the, the epic bonus the podcast. epic bonus podcast episode. Um, yeah. but also, hey guys, uh, if you get on the Patreon, you could steal Josh's million dollar Omno idea. Okay, it's true. And then, it's and then true. You could make it big. So for the low cost of what is it, five dollars? Five one one dollar. Well, five dollar. Five five dollar. For a dollar, you could make a million dollars. Make okay? a million dollars, and, and you'll make me happy because I'll get to play it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, but also, um, also, any five percent of you know five percent to us. That's that's all we ask for. Yeah, five percent and yeah. uh, in our name in the credits, so we can just play it on stream and be like, "Hey, look, it's us." Um. Anyway, <laughs> um, Doug, seriously, dude, this conversation was awesome. I feel like I could talk to fucking forever, and that's why I'm trying to like <laughs> cut it because I, know, just, I don't yeah, I don't want to have someone like get the episode and be like, fuck, this is two hours long. Holy shit. <laughs> um, hey, 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 it's all, it's all good shit. You know, they can break it up into little, uh, little Exactly, exactly. Pieces. Yeah, yeah. Um, Don't you have to digest all your content at once, guys, okay? Exactly. You can, you can, Pause yeah. it, do it again, you know, all that jazz. Um, but as always, what I always do is I let you uh, plug yourself a little bit at the end, non-sexually, unless you want to do it sexually, but I I, I request that mm. that's after that we we hit the record button yeah. to stop. Um, but yeah, I don't think my noise gate would pick it up anyway. So yeah, that's true. Fine. Um, but yeah. what, where can we find you? What do you got going on? Let me, <laughs> let me give me your schmeal, my guy. All right. I'm, uh, the Doug nut on everything. So the Doug nut with two T's on, on Twitch. Uh, I got the YouTube going right now. I'm really trying to do better on the YouTube. So YouTube, uh, TikTok, uh, Twitter, wherever you want to find me, you know, the Doug nut everywhere. Pretty easy. I stream Thursdays through Sundays at three 30 Eastern standard time. Uh, it's a good time. Come and hang out. Come say hi. Come it, come tell me that you listen to the podcast. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Doug is a great great streamer. Go check him out. He's a, he's a he's if you like if you like my streams, you'll like his streams. Let's just say that yeah, we have a very yeah, similar vibe. Very yeah. nice guy. Very funny. Um, and Doug, thank you. you so much for uh, being on, dude. This was a lot of fun. This was so much. Thanks. Fun. Thanks um, for having me, dude. No, thank you for. Uh, joining no, um, no, no, no 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 thank you no thank no no no, 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 no 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 thank you but guys if you guys want to go check out doug all his stuff is down below go check him out go give him some love and um we will see you all either in the bonus bonus episode here shortly or uh next week appreciate bonus you guys it's gonna be banging it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be a, it's gonna be popping off yeah <laughs> but i appreciate you guys thank you so much for listening eat your apples and stay funky my dudes See ya. Bye.